Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's having a nice fall evening. Nice weather here in northern Pittsburgh. And tonight we've got the great pleasure and honor again to have Price with us. Price is probably one of the, uh, what do I want to say, most qualified, most uh, influential traders teachers for teaching technical analysis. He's been inducted in the Traders Hall of Fame back in 2007. He's a founder of what we call BigTrends.com, which uh, provides real-time stock and option strategies. You'll see him quite often on CNBC, Fox News, and Bloomberg. So he is he's one, a very well-known, well, uh, I don't want to say quoted uh, investor, the Wall Street Journal, Barron's, Forbes. He's, he is the uh, one of the best technical investors you're ever going to come across. So with that, Price, welcome again to the Candlestick Forum. We're always uh, glad to see your information. Oh, well, thank you, Steve, and good evening to you, and good evening, everybody. Uh, appreciate that kind introduction, Steve. It's always a pleasure to be with uh, your group because I know they share the same kind of passion for not just trading but also for education. You know, I, I really believe education's at the you know kind of forefront of the values that I've always had. You know, uh, been blessed with uh, a lot of great uh, official education. Graduated from Duke University, but realized quickly when I got into the markets that you better not stop learning because if you stop learning, uh, guess what? You're behind the rest of a lot of savvy, smart people in the market. So Steve, I know, shares that passion for education as well. So glad to be with all of you all. And uh, I do have my uh, lead consultant with me, Chris Sayre, who will be helping to interact, answer some questions here as well. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk not just about technical analysis. I, I am going to weave in some technicals, of course, but I want to talk about how you lay the foundations for really being successful in trading, in particular in options trading. But really, this applies to any kind of trading that you all do. Uh, and we want to talk about some of the psychology aspects of trading, you know, because a lot of it goes back to having the right mindset. So we're going to walk you through all that and then uh, try to leave a little time for questions at the end and share with you how you can kind of really keep expanding your education uh, as a trader and investor, whatever type of a t uh, trader you are, swing trader, day trader, position trader, or more in intermediate to longer term investor types. Now, uh, just a reminder that everything we share with you across these, uh, this training session, which is really kind of geared at kind of the mentality that I take with my Big Trends coaching students, kind of giving you an overview of the importance of these key elements in your trading plan. Uh, it's just for information and education only tonight, of course, so nothing that we talk about when we look at some specific charts. None of that should be considered a specific recommendation of buy or sell any particular security. You, of course, know that you are solely responsible for your investment decisions and big trades and staff are not responsible for any trades you choose to make. And um, you know, we don't provide any personalized financial or tax or legal advice at Big Trends. We send everything out in alerts to our various subscribers and our alert services in real time to everybody at once. You decide how you want to use it that best fits your own risk profile. So make sure you consult with your tax advisor, too, before you make any investment that might impact your unique tax situation. Okay, so when we're talking about taking yourself to true trading mastery, you know, you've probably heard that at all uh, – uh, saw that you know it, it takes uh, countless hours. A lot of people would say it takes uh, potentially thousands, if not ten thousand hours, to become a master at any particular skill. But you know, I want to help give you shortcuts on how to get there faster. How to really avoid wasting a lot of time. Because I don't know, you know, about you, but you know, it seems like life just goes faster and faster. Uh, that you know, and, and the markets, of course, have just adapted with technology to be faster and faster. So you need to figure out how to not waste time, how to really leverage your time as well as your capital to get you focused on what really matters. I think what a lot of people have trouble with when they get into options is that they think that if I just convert, you know, buying a stock low and go buy a call option on a cheap stock, that's going to work out. Well, guess what? That tends not to work so well as a lot of you who have probably tried buying options without educating yourself uh, have probably had some trouble with that. And we talked to a lot of people who got into options didn't have the right education and then made mistakes and then swore off options and said, uh, or you know, it's a bad game to buy options or something. Guess what? 
options, there's opportunities to buy options and sell options. You just have to know what to look for. And I think the key elements are timing is critical, not just to the individual stocks, and, and we'll take a look at some of that, but also, of course, the market environment, too. You know, if you're on the wrong side of the overall market, you can really get yourself in a lot of trouble. You've got another technical indicator, there's no doubt, especially the shorter term traders. You know, the shorter term you get, the more important technicals become. If you're Warren Buffett with a 50 plus year time horizon, then yeah, you shouldn't be looking at the, you know, whatever your favorite technical indicator du jour is because it's going to not matter over the next 50 years if you're Buffett. But guess what? A lot of people don't have that time frame to wait. I want to spend some time too talking about psychology and how important psychology is. Of course, capital management, how you allocate your capital, what I would call money management or capital allocation, very important position sizing, making sure you don't overcommit. I don't care how smart you are, how good you are at trading. If you overcommit your capital, you're eventually going to get yourself in a lot of hot water. Once you learn those components, then you can start to dive into the option strategy piece. And a lot of this goes back to me to knowing yourself. See, we've got a lot of different trader types in with us today. There's going to be people that consider themselves very aggressive, people that consider themselves very conservative or risk averse, that don't want to take a lot of risk, and some of you that are in the middle of that. And what I find is, is that a lot of the strategies have to be tailored back to your own particular risk tolerance, your own particular objectives, what you can handle and what you can't handle. Uh, so that's really important as well. We're going to talk a little psychology and, uh, you know, it's interesting, a lot of the work I do in psychology is adapted from some other great authors and, and when it comes to uh, one of my favorite books of all time. If you don't have this trading book, um, just to type in actually to get you engaged. How many of you have this book, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, if you've been trading for any length of time by uh, Lefebvre is the author's name. Uh, this is about the life and times basically of Jesse Livermore who lived over 100 years ago, okay? And if you don't, that's okay. You can always pick it up. Um, and and uh, basically uh, a lot of you have it, so a lot of you know this. But I, I think it's interesting. It, 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 you go back, there's so many classic quotes in it, um, you know, and this one says, the speculator's deadly enemies are ignorance, greed, fear, and hope. You know, a lot of people think about fear and greed. We'll talk about those. But, of course, if you're, uh, thankfully, you're here, so you're working to educate yourself so that you're not ignorant to market moves that are going on. And then the hopium, as one of my traders calls it, you don't want to get stuck in that hope mode in a trade. If it's not working out, you've got to know how to pull the plug and move on and not get so... Uh, emotionally invest in something you can't cut and run, especially as a trader. But this is a is an awesome, uh, awesome uh, book that kind of taps into a lot of the trading psychology. And he says, all the statute books in the world, all the rule books and all the exchanges of the earth cannot eliminate these from the human animal. Okay, think about that. I think that's an interesting term. What separates humans from animals? Okay, if you were thinking, okay, you know, as humans, what advantage do we have over the rest of the animal kingdom? Anybody have any thoughts on that real quick? You think about, okay, um, you know, uh, what we, uh, a lot of animals, of course, have a survival instinct. Guess what? You, all of our brains have that reptilian uh, kind of mam mammalian brainstem that basically gets back into when you feel like you're under the heat of battle in a trade, guess what? You get some of that survival instinct, some of that adrenaline coursing through your veins, and you feel like you're under the gun. Uh, Herb says self-awareness. I think that's kind of tapping into where I'm going, which is that our brains, you know, the more developed part of our brains, the neocortex actually gives us the ability to reason, the ability to plan, the ability to start to map out what we want, think ahead of just moment by moment um, what's putting the food on the table at this meal and think about how to put food on the table for the rest of our lives. So the, that to me is indeed the big separation is that that thought process. So you want to take yourself out of this kind of survival instinct of just just moment by moment trading because that's going to get you in a mode of really not, and choice and free will, that's another big one, you're right, Bob. That's going to get you out of this kind of fear-based trading mode that frankly is whipping you out of a lot of your trades. It's causing you to take your winners way too quickly and not get a lot of, uh, of your game because you're worried about letting a winner turn into a loser. So that what that ends up doing for a lot of traders, it's a, it's kind of a it's a trap. You get into taking quick gains, but then when you have losses, you hate taking losses. So you're waiting for it to turn into a small gain, and small losses turn into what? Bigger losses, unfortunately. So we don't want that to happen. Fear of losing, and and the big way to get around this is you have to say, okay, what is my stop? You know. And, of course, you've got to develop a system that you know you can follow through up and down in all kinds of market conditions. And then 
in my best Jack Nicholson voice, guys say, can you handle exiting at the stop? You know, if you have a stop in place and you don't follow it, then you're, you you might as well, you know, just basically blow up uh, your whole trading. Then you're not going to be able to trust yourself. A lot of this goes back to having confidence, but confidence comes from having a belief and a trust in your in your in your ability to pull the trigger. Not just getting in, but when the going gets tough, getting out and moving on. Okay, so cutting and running can a lot of times be very important for trading uh, success over time. Um, so you don't get stuck on the losing trains going nowhere, but rather move on into a train that's going to move on and take you to your destination. Now, fear of missing out is a big one, too. And a lot of these fears, by the way, came from uh, Mark Douglas's book, Trading in the Zone, as well as his book, The Disciplined Trader. Uh, Mark Douglas, unfortunately, uh, passed away here not too long ago, but a really innovative guy. Those are also great books that um, I would highly recommend. Um, from that psychology trading author. Now, fear of missing out is basically I would I would classify greed as essentially when fear has left the building, the absence or lo when there's no more fear left. When you're so confident that now you think, well, I should have quit my day job a lot long a long time ago. That's kind of dangerous because you know I, I remember back in the tech bubble there was a great E Trade commercial where a, a guy is at his desk job and he sees his stock spike up. And then he runs in and tells his boss, I quit. And then he comes back and the thing spiked right back down. You know, so so the thought is, you know, you've got to have that, that kind of sensibility of a, a healthy fear is a good thing that prevents you from overcommitting your capital. Okay. Now the fourth fear would be the fear of being wrong. This is where a lot of people get stuck in this kind of analysis paralysis mode. You do so much research, but then you can't seem to pull the trigger because you're so afraid of being wrong on a trade, afraid of losing on a trade. And these kind of fears can really uh, can really tie you up. So how do we manage that? Several key thoughts you got to remember. You can't assume that the next trade will be like the last trade for better or worse. A lot of traders are getting too low after a loss and too high after a gain. What you learn from a big trend system is you've got to take small losses and then you've got to give yourself the ability to have at least part of the trade go on to bigger gains. You want to ask yourself too, what's the worst that can possibly happen? The worst thing that can happen is if you trade too large, it's kind of like doubling down at the blackjack table. If you win a bunch of hands in a row, that's great. But eventually, guess what? You're going to get nabbed by a losing hand. And if you've traded too big, piling past profits into a trade, you're going to tend to get your risk too big and end up getting whacked eventually. Maybe you have a good run, but eventually it catches up to you. So our goal is to say, look, trade to not make or break your portfolio, but rather to steadily build wealth and control risk at all the time. What this will do too is it'll get your stress level down to a healthy amount of stress. A healthy stress is good. You want to be pushing yourself to get better and better to grow yourself and to grow your portfolio, but you don't want to overly stress yourself or your portfolio out. Now, so starting small is important. When you're starting to build these habits, it's really important that you focus on consistency of your execution. What I tell a lot of my big trends traders is if you've had trouble following a system, Follow it on paper if you have to, but basically tell yourself, okay, look, I'm just going to follow my system to get in and get out, and I'm going to do it either in paper or in a small amount of money 10 times in a row. If you can't follow your system 10 times in a row, then how are you expect to build a habit to follow it for the rest of your life? So start 10 times in a row. Then do it again another 10 times in a row, and then you can consider starting to either go from paper money to real money or starting small and working your way up to a little bit bigger allocation as long as you're going to be true to your system and your methodology. A big part of the big trends approach, too, is adding at what we call low-risk entry points. Okay, so um, a big part of that, let's just let's talk about a chart, for example, because I know you want to look at charts, too. You know, we look at a lot of things at big trends, and I'm just going to show you just one thing here that we'll talk about. That we, we teach a lot of these indicators, so it's only so much I can get across in an hour. But, you know, for example, if you were looking at the SPY here over the last month or so, you saw we had a a buy signal happening when the percent R broke out back here in July. And we'll teach you a little bit about percent R, Larry Williams indicator. The big trends way, we look for it to go overbought, continue overbought. That tells you that the institutions are piling on. And you had a pretty good rally effect from early July until about the latter part of August when we ended. Since then, we've been kind of stuck in a range. We tried to give a sell signal if we had broken down below that low, but we snapped back up there September 12th. So we reset the low. Didn't fall through. I told my big trends traders this setup was not a valid sell. We we're still officially in the range. And we've been stuck in that range ever since. Now, if you were just following the S&P, it's like watching paint dry recently, right? And you've got a jobs report coming out tomorrow morning. 
where of course you've got some some issues there. But look at what's been going on in meanwhile with the bond market over the last couple of weeks. You know that the bond market is more worried about what's going on with Fed tightening, when they're going to tighten. I've said all year they wouldn't tighten before the election, but they will tighten most December after the election is behind us in November. But the beauty of this chart right here, we're looking at not too much action on the daily chart, but check this out on the hour early chart, if you're a swing trader, I tell my swing traders, focus on the hourly chart. I just want you to look for a second at the percent R, which is that when we go over bot and we keep going up, my system says, in this case above this yellow line, which is the hourly trend line for uh, the, the big trends band breaking out to the upside. You can see we started to break out on TLT back here September 21st. The TLT was trading around 136, 135 and three quarters, and popped all the way up to our daily chart resistance target within one penny of that target at 139.16. We hit 139.15 back there uh, on September 28th, about a week ago. Okay, so then it exits officially at 138.38. So that was about a, you can see, about a three and a half point move in the TLT. Now, is that is that worth trading? Well, you know, if we convert that into an options chart real quick, let's just look at, if you were buying when the system said buy at 135.73, we would not buy the at the money options. We would tend to recommend something more conservative. Something like maybe, you know, going out to the October monthly options, that's the October 21st as an example, and maybe even something in the money like a 133 call. And just, you see the exit hit on uh, the end of the day, 928. Well, what did that option do over that period? Well, that option, you can see um, coming in here, we saw that, again, the same kind of breakout was happening here back there on the 21st. The option was trading officially at about 365. And by the 28th, it got up here to uh, about mm, 613, okay? Now, you can see it's more volatile if you wait too long. Of course, by the time that the option flipped down, it was two days later. We've already gotten the exit on the TLT. So, and anyway, the point is, is that, okay, that was a nice little tradable move. On the other side, look at what TLT has been doing over the last few days. We broke down here the 1st of October and then followed through below that low. Notice we broke down also back on September 30th, did not follow through below that low, from midday on the 30th there, it hung around it but could not close below it. So we don't get a signal until it closes below that key low. We teach a lot of these techniques to our um, to our Big Trend students and you'll learn how you can learn all these in my Position for Profits uh, special that I've set up for the Bigelow group here tonight. But uh, to tell you about that later, right now we're talking about this trade which was saying short right at right about 137, 136.99 back there as of 1.30 on October 3rd. That was this past Monday. You know, we're four days into that trade. And look at how the percent R is staying oversold in the bottom 20% of its readings here. We look at a lot of other stuff, so we'll get into the more of that. But, but the point is, okay, if you were looking at the 137 level, we might have been looking at about a 140 strike put. So again, we don't, we don't take the most aggressive approach. We try to say, look, if it doesn't move, you don't want to get blasted. So we buy in the money options as a way to say, okay, if you were buying the 140 put there midday October the 3rd, and you can see October 3rd, this option's trading here uh, midday in the neighborhood of about $3.5. Uh, as of the end of the day, it was 346 Well, guess what? That option finished today. It's still on an official sell signal for the TLT, so this option's still in play. But I'm not telling you to buy it here because it's a little extended above its support line here. You can see in yellow. But it's gone from that uh, three and a half to about that six fifteen bid last trade six twenty two. So the point is, is you don't have to take the most aggressive approach with these types of options uh, plays when you're following uh, a consistent execution of a system. And not every trade is going to work, but a big part of this is that we're looking for trades where we can lose smaller and win bigger. That's a big part of the big trend system. Okay, so that's how we manage fear. Now, as we alluded to before, also it's not just fear; it's also greed. So, um, you know, greed is another one, and, and emotions actually are what come in is, is what I would say is part of the, the obstacles that you've encountered as a trader. Guess what? A lot of other traders have encountered them, too. I've talked to a lot of thousands, actually, of traders over my uh, 17 years of running big trends, and basically I find that these issues keep coming up again and again, not pulling the trigger, even after doing all the work, not taking your losses quickly when you know you should be out, letting a lot of your profits slip away taking small profits and larger losses as a pattern. Um, you know, that you have a good stock, but then the market moves against even that stock getting pulled down by an adverse market move, some market timing. Trying to hyper-trade or over-trade after a loss, trying to make up for a losing trade too quickly. 
reacting based on your emotions of fear and greed. In fact, emotions are playing into all of these, as you notice. Getting too confident after a winning streak, your ego starts to take over. You say, I'm, 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 I'm the king of the world here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch up to Bill Gates and Warren Buffett real quick. You've got to dial that back a couple notches and be humble and even in your approach. Not just getting financially drawn down, but maybe even getting psychologically drawn down. If you're trying to trade too much through a bad environment or through the wrong kind of vehicle, that can get to you. Or just in general information overload. Let's face it. You all get the benefit of a ton of great webinars, a ton of great education out there, but you still have to decide where to focus. So, you know, that's where I'm always telling my, my uh, Big Trend traders, hey, if you're trying something else, that's fine too. Come back to Big Trends, uh, but focus on it when you come back to it. You know, whatever you do, I'd rather see you not try to meld together the Big Trend system with uh, too many other systems. Steve and I always have had a good complementary approach because candles actually kind of, work nicely within the bigger picture trends that I'm talking about to, to show you important reversals and important potential uh, turning points. But, you know, but really, you know, that's kind of complementary, so I think that can work well together. But don't try to do too many different things at once or you'll end up doing none of them well. So, you know, the biggest trading rule, whether you're short term or longer term, is have a written trading plan. Now, let me ask you all a question here. How many of you have a crystal clear written trading plan. And before you answer, let me let me put it this way. If you were to teach somebody your your written trading rules and everything's spelled out in your mind uh, precisely, right? You teach them and you go on a one year sabbatical. Would you be confident that you came back a year later that your portfolio would be okay because they would have known how to follow your trading rules to the letter? under a lot of different circumstances and contingencies, okay? And those of you like Mark to say, yes, I applaud you, because for a lot of folks, they think they have a written plan, and then when you put it through that filter, you go, well, there's probably still some potential fuzzy areas that I can work on. And I'm not going to put everybody on the spot. I'm going to assume if you're not saying yes, that a lot of you, we've got a huge crowd in with us, of course, tonight, as, as Steve always does, but a lot of you, obviously, are still working through that, okay? So this is an important opportunity to say, okay, you've got to get focused, uh, and so there's some fuzz, says Paul, okay, and this, I, I think just admitting that puts you ahead of a lot of other traders because you recognize that you're being honest with yourself. See, one of the great things about trading to me is that it basically pig, figures out where you're not crystal clear, and it will, it will go and attack the weak points in your plan, and it feels like you're under attack if you're not crystal clear about what you need to do. And so that's good because if you're honest with yourself about needing to fix something, needing to clean it up, needing to get specific about how you get out of this or that situation that wasn't previously defined, you will now have covered those contingencies, and you'll be ahead of most of the crowd. If you're kind of covering for yourself and saying, well, I'm pretty good, I'm not, Chris, I'm not crystal clear, but I'm pretty close, the market's going to still expose, uh, you know, the, when the, it's like when the tide goes out, you know, the, the the emperor has no clothes gets exposed, right? The thought being, you know, let's let's make sure we've we've covered you uh, completely. So I want to give you ten questions that I, I really walk through our big trend students with to kind of say, okay, these are questions to ask yourself about how you can start to get more clarity. Now, a lot of people will see uh, these first couple and go, okay, I've got that covered. How do you enter? A lot of people are pretty good at entering. Okay. Entering is easy, um, you know, but then the other pieces are a, lot, a little bit more um, and require a little more discipline, let's say. Um, so, you know, a big thing for me, though, is that I don't want to be a chaser. I don't want to be somebody that just enters because, you know, somebody had good news today. You know, Twitter, um, you know, of course, you know, had that news today about, you know, that they were saying that, uh, that you know, that CRM, uh, Salesforce.com has, has been rumored to be a buyer, but then Twitter got pounded today on some rumors that maybe they might not indeed get a buyout offer for some of the other big players. Um, and so it's interesting because, you know, if you look at then the charts, you'll see, let's look at Twitter real quick. You know, you can see that, you know, if you just bought on a breakout, you're buying up here, and it did run a little bit more, but actually, ironically, today's daily chart gives us a retest. It was a pretty steep one, but we had a similar steep one back here in uh, July, and what that means is that, you know what, this pullback here underneath the overbought threshold it makes today's key low on Twitter 1960 a low. But if it can hold, you probably can see a bit of a bounce on Twitter. Um, I'm not saying go buy calls on it tomorrow morning, but I'm saying watch that. In, in contrast, Salesforce.com CRM giving us what we call bear retest. It's been actually on a bearish pattern here for a few weeks, 
maybe slightly violated there given that quick exit and then get back into it. But it just gave a bear uh, retest two days ago at that high under $73 and then got hammered yesterday down under 67 That was more than a six-point move in two sessions. Today's bounce on hopes that maybe they're not going to buy out Twitter uh, actually hit a high of 72 If it closes over 72 that would violate this current bearish test. We look at other tools like CCI and ADX and more. The bottom line is that those are actually retests, um, CRM bearish and Twitter bullish, ironically, despite the day's moves, it looked like Twitter got hammered and CRM bounced back. But you've got to take a bigger picture perspective and actually look to take advantage of the retracements within a proven trend. So it's a big part of what we do. So so we're walking you through that. Now, um, keep it moving here. Um, that you also should write down everything, actually. What's your catalyst for the move? What you're looking for? And then specify what system or method you're trading. A lot of people I talk to are trying to trade different systems on different um, types of signals, and then they don't know when they go back and look, even if you wrote it down, what was driving that trade versus the next trade. If you're using the same system, that's great. Then you'll be able to compare, okay, what worked, what didn't. I like to go back through and, and recap, you know, how I'm doing month after month. Now, as we get into exit, you know, a lot of you think you got exit figured out too, but a lot of uh, traders that I talk to, uh, it's a little bit reactive and a little bit too late sometimes by the time that you get that exit. So you've got to obviously know your initial stop on any trend and any trade that you make, okay? And we'll talk with about how we find our best edges um, within the retracement points within a trend. And then you also need to figure out how to trail that and protect your profits while not getting whipsawed out of otherwise good moves and good trends. So a big part of it for me is, okay, what's the inflectical turning point? A lot of traders would just use a basic moving average. I like to trail based on these retracements that I just showed you, like on Twitter and CRM, as what I call the retest. That's a new inflection point. That means that, okay, it's crunch time here. What's going to happen from here? Well, guess what? If you're putting on a trade right near the stop, and then it closes on beyond that level, fine, I'm out. But I'm not I'm not hanging around too long, and I'm also, if I'm right, I get some wonderful reentry points within a trend. What types of orders will you use is the number of third one I've got on here. And a lot of traders I know um, will try to be too tight um, in getting into a trade, trying to split the bid and the ask, especially in the options market. But a lot of times what I'll do is if I'm really looking to get in, I'll put a limit order in. Uh, halfway between the middle and the ask, if not up to the ask, if I'm really wanting to make sure I get in. And then when I'm getting out, I'll put a limit order typically at the bid. Um, it allows you to define your risk and reward a little better with limit orders. You know what you're going to get filled at. The danger is a fast market, right? If you're putting a limit order to get out and it's violating even beyond what your limit was, you're not going to get filled at that specific price. It's going to be below that, and then you're going to have to go chase it down. So it's very important that when you get an exit, get it cleaned up, get it out, move it out of your portfolio, move on to the next one. As, uh, as a longtime trading friend of mine said, it, we're not in the storage business. Uh, we're in the moving business. We need to move it in and we need to move it out. Okay, We don't want to store losing trades and then end up having to sell them at much more markdown prices later on. Um, now, uh, how much capital we need to trade successfully? There are economies of scale. A lot of people want to get started with just a tiny amount of money. They get seduced and thinking, hey, I can buy an option for a few hundred dollars. But, you know, I don't want you investing all of your capital into any one trade. We tend to recommend on any one of our big trends uh, alert portfolios, we tend to recommend 5% and no more than 10% of the capital allocated just to that portfolio goes into each new trade. So there's going to be a cash cushion in an option system, but you get leverage with the trades that you're making. So we can get plenty of leverage as it is. We don't have to get to fully invested um, with a leveraged approach with options. So those costs, of course, will go down relative to your commissions. As I alluded to, okay, 5 to 10% per account. And that's not saying of the entire portfolio that I have, but of the breakout that I use for each account. So a full position might be 10%, a half position, 5%. The basic goal is keep that total portfolio risk on any one trade around 2% or less. I actually studied the Market Wizards book by Jack Schwager, the first one that came out, had a lot of great interviews with a lot of great traders and hedge fund managers. And when you looked at all their comments about how much portfolio risk they would let themselves take, I added them up and averaged them, and it came out to 2.2% on average. Okay, so among some of the best and brightest in the business, they were saying they still want to keep their portfolio risk in that 2% range. Uh, and that makes a lot of sense. So the idea is that if you put 20% of your portfolio in a trade, 
it only takes a 10% loss in that position to lead to a 2% loss in your portfolio, right? And if you compare that to say you only put 10% of your capital in the trade, then you can have room up to a 20% loss in that position, which would still be a 2% or, or a couple hundred bucks on 10,000 loss. So the thought be, being, okay, nobody likes to take a loss, but that's a manageable loss that you can stomach and move on versus losing 10 or 20% of your whole portfolio because you were too stubborn to go ahead and shut the trade down. Now, you got to have focus. This, this graphic always makes me kind of a little dizzy, so we won't linger on it too long. But how many positions do you focus on at once? Um, you know, I'm a big believer in concentration in any particular portfolio. We will tend to recommend between five and seven at a maximum, and a lot of times these days, even two or three or four per strategy will be plenty to get some uh, short-term focus on some key trades we like and then move them out and move into some other stuff so we're not going to hold too many positions at once. That way, if you get an exit signal, you don't have so many different irons in the fire that you miss the exit signal, and then you're stuck. We don't want to be stuck in a trade. Now, seven, you got to have a trading journal. Um, how many of you, by the way, have a trading journal that you write in regularly about what you're seeing in the markets, what you're thinking about an idea, what's working? Uh, you know, uh, you, you look at, okay, you know, what's, uh, what are the observations related to, for me, it's about did I execute my plan? It doesn't mean did I have a winner or a loser. I don't grade myself on if you have a losing day and you're making notes on that, um, you know, I don't grade myself and say it was therefore a bust of a day. It's saying, you know, it would be more of a bust to me if I didn't execute my plan and happened to get lucky and then that that lack of discipline would, would eventually be my downfall. So you don't want to basically be undisciplined. You want to use this as a tool to learn basically what you're thinking. Because let's face it, evolutionarily, we are deletion creatures, meaning that we're not going to remember when that got at us and and uh, and tried to get us, uh, you know, uh, every moment of every day, or else we're not going to be able to function, right? We're going to be quaking our boots and we're going to be stuck and at risk for the next uh, uh, predator that might be down the pike, right? So the thought becoming, you know, we will tend to remember the good. And we'll tend to delete a lot of the bad or a lot of the, the things that didn't work out. So I think writing it down helps us to sort of be open and honest about what worked and what didn't and learn from that. So you're learning not just from your mistakes. You're also learning from your successes. I call this whole – when you're looking to repeat your biggest successes, that is actually probably the biggest thing that you can do out of your journal. It's not what you can kind of zero in on to no longer do where you've been making mistakes. Sure, you want to – obviously not make mistakes, but it's repeating successful patterns. And, and frankly, a lot of what I'm sharing with you and, and share across my full um, training course I'm going to tell you about is the, the things that worked again and again, especially when I realized that I was leaving money on the table, especially when I realized I was taking my profits too quickly. I was not giving myself a chance to let that keep running. We call this, this my success profile. and you, Everybody's got a success profile of what's worked for you the best. Um, you know, if you, or if you trade it for any length of time. If you haven't, then you want to build this. So for me, I'm, I've got some real specific things I look for. On a really long-term type of a chart, believe it or not, testing showed that when a stock moves 100% above its 200-day, that sounds absolutely way overbought. In fact, I had uh, a lady come to me after the end of one of my live seminars in Orlando years ago, and I was talking about, at the time, Taser, which – it was a phenomenal story because I remember being at Fox News and ready to do an appearance and then walked the father and the two sons that ran Taser in the big, long, black leather jackets, um, Matrix style, Keanu Reeves style, and they were riding right at the top of where that stock chart was. When I saw that, I thought, we're not far from the peak uh, because they were out there hitting Wall Street uh, brokers and pumping up their stock right before it got hammered. Uh, so, you know, again, just a little side note, when you see things like that, you want to pay attention. But, you know, this uh, a lady came to me and said, hey, um, I didn't buy uh, Taser there because it was more, it was way above its 200 day. I think it was more than 100% above its 200 day. And I thought, isn't that an interesting belief? I wonder if it's actually true. If something's more than 100% above its 200 day, guess what? It actually is moving into that parabolic kind of orbit effect where it can stay in orbit longer than you or I would possibly expect percent are greater than that 80 percentile less than that 20 percentile 
on the positive scale that I use um, outside of the acceleration bands. This is something that I that I use actually to start big trends. That's how I grew my portfolio quickly, finding the parabolic moves and avoiding the slow boats and getting on the fast moving names to really trade and build wealth quicker. Average directional movement, the ADX, should be trending higher. Okay. The efficiency ratio, an indicator I developed after watching a guy named Perry Kaufman talk about the efficiency concept at a conference, um, really, really useful. So you want to be able to look at what your success profile is and then follow that consistently time and again. So so those um, uh, questions came up, uh, those were my best long trades. Uh, yeah, I mean, they work for both. You can use ADX to find both big winners on the upside and the downside. You just need to know how to use them. Now, um, position review at the end of the day. You've got to have a routine that closes out your day or your week, however, whatever time you're putting into it. You should kind of just make this part of your process. Review your trades. See if you followed your plan. That's the biggest thing. And log those trades. And also log trades I didn't make. So that way you see if you're missing something. That's how I came upon the concept of overbought's not necessarily all bad. If, if something continues to go overbought, that means that the institutions are buying it you probably want to get a piece of that yourself. Make your comments and then be prepared for that. Now, as far as preparation goes, I'm trying to cover these so we can go through some of the charts as well, kind of lay some groundwork and then, and then show you some of the charts and show you some of the pieces of this here. But in an hour, I know it's a lot to cover. But bottom line is I want to lay some groundwork here. Preparation is so important. You've got to prepare not only run through the charts, but you've also got to get your mind right about, okay, how you're going to respond to opportunities that may present themselves in the coming trading day or in the coming week, however, whatever your time frame is. So define that time where you prepare and get ready for trading. I like to prepare after the close for the next day's trading, and that allows me to get ready to be formulating a plan before you get in the heat of battle. See, if you're not reacting until 9.30 Eastern the next morning when the markets are now open and gyrating wherever they're going to gyrate, you know, then you're going to be much more reactive and potentially miss opportunities that the market may be presenting to you. So it's much more important to be proactive instead. Now, um, in terms of brokers, a lot of people think that commissions are the biggest factor that they can control, so they're always looking for their lowest commissions. And uh, hey, it's good to get commissions down, but that's a small cost when you compare it to the, if their broker is effective or not at getting you in or not. If your broker doesn't get you into a meaningful winning trade, they just cost you a lot of lost opportunity which could be well worth a few extra dollars in commission. So it's important you are really in tune with your broker giving you fair and speedy execution of your orders. Okay, and then the big thing is once you've done all this work, you've got to follow your plan. I find that a lot of people are constantly just grading themselves on, okay, did I make money for the day? Did I lose money for the day? And as I've showed you, if you made money and didn't follow your rules, you're just setting yourself up to break your rules again, okay? So you've got to have some kind of a framework to allow yourself to stay with the rules. Otherwise, your ego takes over. Now, why would that be bad? Isn't having a healthy ego good? Um, if you think about it, what does your ego want more than anything? Anybody have a guess? What does your ego want? Your ego wants to be proven what? Your, it, it comes from the training we've had in school, in past jobs before we got into trading. Uh, or jobs that we're in with the trading. That's right, Herb. It wants to be right. It wants to, ego wants to be proven right. So when you want to be proven right, then you basically say, guess what? That means that in trading, that means you're going to take the quick winners and you're not going to take losers because you're going to not want to be proven wrong. So that leads you in that cycle of small profits and big losses. That's something you've got to break that, as I said, that Pavlovian kind of, stimulus response reward punishment cycle and say okay follow the rules said 10 trades in a row once you've done that do another 10 trades in a row then you're going to be able to stick with it and i'll share it with you how you can get all the rules that i teach now bottom line is that it's important to build that discipline of trading discipline's not a word that anybody likes to hear but there's something nice about when you get in a nice steady routine of discipline it's like any habit it becomes easier and easier to where you just do it almost automatically you don't necessarily think about brushing your teeth in morning and night, but once you, especially as a kid, right? But once you build that habit, it just becomes like second nature. And you know, it's, it didn't seem like much fun as a kid, but now it's like, hey, it's a good thing they do that because you're you're protecting your teeth. You know, you're taking care of yourself. So it's the same concept here. That discipline is important. So so what I want to do is I want to walk you through just some more examples of kind of what you 
can learn from big trends on the chart side, and we'll take some questions then after that um, and, and walk you through that. And, and part of this, by the way, is kind of building up to, okay, kind of there's only so much I can cover in an hour. And so one of the things we did do, and I'll come back to it later, but in case you have to run out early, I don't want you to miss this. So we set up this really cool, um, uh, basically coaching uh, type of a program that's all on demand instant access. And what it is, is it's basically, we call it position yourself for profits. And you actually get three different courses, the Foundations for Trading Mastery course, the Ultimate Option Strategies course, all kinds of different option strategies I've used over 25 plus years of trading, and trade management course. So you're getting all these components about how to build your plan, how to have a trading journal, how, and, and, and really laying that groundwork for the trade mastery, how to, um, you know, set up the psychology and the trade management piece and then the ultimate option strategies. That adds up to actually 39 different sessions that I did over the course, each one being at least an hour. So you're talking about some tremendous content all in. Usually it would be a, a much higher price point here. You can see each one of them by themselves is a 495 value. That would be $1,500 of value. I've broken it down for Steve's group here tonight for you all for just an all in price of just 395 bucks. And if that wasn't enough, I'm also throwing in an extra bonus tonight. I had my, my guys added at the last minute to say, I also want to include the comprehensive 39-part uh, course that you can watch instant on-demand access for life. Okay, you get lifetime access to all this. But then the winner circle is my trading room. You can see me in my trading room every Friday for the next month and, and interact with me so you get to actually see where the rubber meets the road, where we're actually taking the training and the, the education and converting it into real world trading opportunities based on everything you learn. Okay, so that's also included all in for the 395. Okay, so basically when you check that out, you'll see um, it's a tremendous value. Um, again, you're learning from me directly. I did all these courses myself, okay? And I, I, my team and I stand by to answer any questions you have. You get a dedicated email too to, to send in any questions as you watch the materials. So when you add that to your cart, Again, I'm going to show you more trades, so don't worry, I'm, I'm not done with the charts. But, I, but basically, I just wanted to kind of just walk you through that you can add these pieces uh, individually if you want, but all of them together is your best value. Okay, so, um, so you get all of those courses, the options, strategies, the foundations that lays all the trading plan stuff and all the trade journal and all the other kind of core pieces you got to have to be successful, and then the trading psychology and trade management along with the winner circle for just three ninety five. So then you just scroll down and get your information in there and you're good to go. Now if you want to get any one piece, you say you really would just like to learn options, you can actually click on any one of these links off of that order page. So you just wanted to go to the ultimate option strategies by itself. Each one of those we set up for you here tonight for just one ninety five a piece. So if you just want to know all the different options you can see down below it walks you through all the components then you will be able to learn that. We also give some bonus technical analysis training in each one of these courses. So you get some bonus technical indicator training too. Um, so again, if you just want to do one, 195, you do all three, that would be like almost 600 bucks. You're getting it for just 395 and I'm throwing in for the full, all complete package buyers, the bonus of a, a full month of my um, Winter Circle trading room that I do every single Friday. So I'll do it when you sign up tonight, actually, you'll be ready to go with my Winter Circle session starting tomorrow. Um, and you can start really seeing how I do it as well as get seeing the archive in case you're not able to be there live. Okay, anyway, um, so that I'll come back for that more, but basically I just wanted to kind of, in case you had to leave early, the position for profit scores. I know my associate Chris has posted along with Steve, so you can check it out. It's really phenomenal value for basically me giving you a shortcut to 25 plus years of market knowledge in a matter of hours. Now I know, hey, you know, you get 39 sessions, you're not going to watch that in one day. You can't physically. It's more than, it's 39 hours plus of content, but you get lifetime access and you watch it at your own pace and we, we're there for you to answer any questions you have on all the material too. Okay, so what I want to show you, I want to show you a little bit about some of the power of the Big Trends tools because what we do you know, I was sharing with you, and I'll even what I'll probably do here, after I show you the scanning piece here, is I'll, I'll do a quick lightning round so you can pop in some stocks that we can look at real quick together. What we do is we actually would say, okay, I share with you percent R 
um, as, as one of the kind of simplest, easiest tools to understand. It's one simple line. It's just looking at where we are within the range. You know, if we close, if a stock's trading at in a range in the last, uh, you know, say in the daily chart in the last uh, six weeks, uh, <clears throat> say it's trading in a range between 100 and 110, and today it finishes at 105. Guess what? That's right in the midpoint of the range. That'd be the 50th percentile. It can't go above the 100th percentile at 110 or below the lower percentile at 100 until it breaks that range. By definition, you would think, well, why would you want to trade at the low end of the range? Well, because ranges turn into trends, okay? Trends happen because you stretch the range. You break out through the 110 high. You break below the 100 low. As we stay in the bottom tier and keep making lower lows, that's the definition of a downtrend. Okay, so anyway, what we've got here, for example, is a 60-minute chart uh, interval for all the big name stocks that I follow, almost 200 of them. And if I said, okay, I want to know what hourly charts are really breaking out at the end of the day today. And this would be the last few hours. Bars ago means, in this case, hours ago. So like one name that was popping late in the day, breaking out was Cirrus, uh, C-R-U-S, Cirrus Logic. Um, you can see Avago. So these are chip stocks. So tech is actually doing pretty well. Okay, AVGO, we're going to look at those here in a second. JP Morgan has earnings next Friday, a week from tomorrow. As I said, remember the jobs data is tomorrow, so you might wait on these until you got the jobs behind you and then consider it. Now, we don't just look at the hourly chart, of course. We want to factor that in against the daily chart, so we can change our intervals and look at all these scans on every time frame. Same thing, and so green means it's a confirmed buy. Red means it's potentially a retest point for a stock like UMP that's been above that 80 percentile and now pulling back into a key test point at the end of the day today. If you flipped it upside down and said, well, what was weak on the hourly chart? Surprisingly, gold's been very weak for the last uh, five or seven days, GLD. We'll look at that one. Uh, Nike got weak again today late, um, you know, after being up a little bit earlier, started to flip over again. And then you also see a few other names. Uh, we actually were on this one uh, and booked some profits on that one from yesterday into the day on T-Mobile on the downside, TMUS. So there's something in here for everybody. We run these scans, and then you start lining up the different time frames and say, okay, the better that they do, uh, if you get bear signals across the daily, the hourly, the 15 minute, those three key time frames are really what I look at. And I'll, I'll just show you, for example, just the overall panel. It's a lot to look at, I know, from kind of if you haven't done this before. But, you know, if I'm, if I'm saying, you know what, Obviously, like CRM, obviously was a little bit firm intraday here on the 15-minute chart. So, you know, we would have said let's wait till we're out of that little short-term attempt to buy today on CRM. But I am cautious on it as we head into the next few days um, because that bounces a bear retest that we showed you on the daily chart. But the hourly is kind of mixed, and the uh, the 15 minutes definitely not yet ready for bearish. So we're looking at kind of being ready to be bearish on the bigger picture, but waiting for the short-term charts to come and confirm that that's the right attitude. As I mentioned, uh, you know, when we talked about gold, you know, the gold's been a one that's been steady down here for about the last week. You see the daily chart took a little bit of time to really get broken, and it gapped down again this morning and then kind of hovered right near the long-term moving average at the end of the day. But look at the hourly chart here. When that broke down, now notice the initial breakdown on the hourly in yellow here on this this is the big trends band that tracks this percent R uh, and the percent R retracements. But notice, things didn't really accelerate until you broke below the daily support area, which in this case was around 125 and a half, 125.46. Once you broke down below that on October 3rd, this past Monday, this week, and then you retrace. See that little retracement right there at the end of the day on Monday? That's what we call a classic bear retest. It's testing above the overbought threshold. Those are often one bar, one candle wonders here. And then if they violate, then you hop out. But if they don't, you've got a great reentry spot. If, you, if you've ever missed out on a trend that you saw it was starting to break down or break out and you wish you'd had a way to get back on it, the retest strategy, what I call the lower risk entry point, um, is the ideal type of a spot to get a piece of this move. Guess what? Again, if you were looking at gold there and it was at 125, I would even though you would have made more money buying the at the money puts, don't do it. That's a that's a sucker's play. If you're new to options, I would say, hey, you might even consider something like the really conservative 130 strike puts. You know what? On that bar right there, um, you know, as we headed into the end of the day, that was trading at about uh, five bucks as of the end of the day Monday. 
guess what? That five bucks now got, went over ten bucks today. That's a very conservative option. That's mostly what we call intrinsic value. And that means you're not paying a lot of extra time to control trading the gold market, in this case gold ETF, GLD, for a tiny fraction. You know, when we said gold was like at 125, 100 shares would cost you 12 and a half thousand bucks. You could buy that option for 500 bucks. That's where your leverage kicks in at 25 to 1. When you buy that instrument that's almost moving point for point with the GLD, in this case inversely, gold goes down, the put goes up. And these indicators are saying this thing's really taking off and staying overbought. That's actually a good sign for higher and higher highs for the GLD put option. And then, of course, GLD in return was moving on the downside. Okay, so basically, as we look at these types of situations, of course, another one people always ask me about is Apple, right? So you can see Apple on the hourly chart um, has been dead money since about uh, you know the last kind of exit back here about September 22nd. See how tight that's been stuck on the hourly chart on that range? It's really, really tight. Now, we did try to start breaking out here late today and to get a near retest right into the support on the hourly, 112.69. So um, so basically, um, I'm sorry, 113.93, excuse me, and we touched it right at the end of the day. So I knew that was touching. So basically, it's touching that, and you can see it as we zoom in closer, that yellow line. We're above the, the blue daily line. This has a chance to get going. Now, the problem is, of course, you've got some overhead resistance that people are going to be watching around 115 or just under 115, but it's saying that the structure of the chart is improving. So, for example, this is not a recommendation, but just if I was looking at something like this, I might say, you know what, if you're looking at the 110 calls, the stock closed today 113, uh, what was that, 113.94, okay? So if we looked at a 110 call, that's intrinsically worth just under $4. It's worth $3.94. You go out to the October options that expire here in another couple of weeks, the monthly October options. This option closed today. 430 by 445. I said it's worth 394 intrinsically. That means you're only paying, if you bought it here at 445, you're only paying an extra 50 cents or 50 bucks a contract out of your $445 investment would be time risk. If nothing happens and the stock doesn't move at all, you're going to lose that half buck on your invest, on your total $445 invested. That's just about, what, maybe 12% uh, of the total, 13% of the total premium you pay. That means that 87% of that option purchase is intrinsic value. So it's kind of crunch time. You see the option chart also came in for a key test there. We'd like to see it hold that hourly low point going forward into each future hour's close. Not right off the open tomorrow, but the hour close at 1030, 1130, 1230 Eastern time. Okay, that's how we do the hourly closes, the bottom of each hour, okay, the bottom half there. So, you know, you can see last time this broke out back here, we had a monster move as it ran from the you know initial breakout area about four up to about um, 690 you know so not a bad little move over a couple of days in mid-september so you know the point of this is that okay now let's do a let's do a quick lightning round and have you pop in a few symbols for just about a few minutes i don't want to keep steve here too long but we'll just do a quick three to five minutes of just showing you some of the symbols for the benefit of everybody okay so if you're looking at you know momo says uh says Moto X, you know, basically, and they're going to fly by here, so I'm just trying to kind of keep an eye. I'll try to get to what I can here. You know, that what you're looking for, you know, with a name like that is, you look at how that stock, where we got the percent R buy signal. It came all the way back here in, Ju in July, and we're still not out of that uptrend. That's a beauty, given that the breakout happened at under $13. Look at all the retest points. All these retest points show you spots you could have added to the position including actually today's retest. Okay, so today's retest, 2375 was a low. It, if it closes below 2375, you're done with that trend. But until that, um, it's still hanging in okay. So that's a pretty beautiful move there. NVIDIA, we mentioned the chip stocks have been strong. How strong? Look at how great NVIDIA's been. Uh, the daily charts has been phenomenal with multiple moves there. And each one of these retests, you might sometimes get stopped out after a retest. Let's talk about that. I don't want to just talk good news. Let's say you bought there right at the end of the day. The low is 4530. You bought at the end of the day 4573. That was within my threshold to be willing to buy as you'll learn from the training. And then 
you see it closed below that 4530 and 24. So you're hopping out the next bar's open, which happened to be higher at 46.10. Okay, but let's assume it was at 45.24. You're losing um, from the prior day's close about a half dollar, right? 49 cents. So that's a, just about 1% of the stock. But if you catch one of these breakouts and, and you see this one went from 51.58, by the time it gave the exit, it was at 58.73. So that moved more than seven points. If you could lose a half and make seven, that's 14 to 1 reward for risk in that example. Now, right now, it's on a buy signal that you can see. It's gone from 63.5. It pulled back today right near a retest intraday low at 66.26 needs to hold going forward in my work. But that's off to a great start, right? So these are the kind of ways you get back on the wagon when you're on a strong trend like that. What about Netflix? We'll just look at dailies to look at the big picture. Netflix has been a dog, but it started to pick up recently, hasn't it? It's really started to heat up. And this is where you'll learn about other tools like CCI that's also showing the strength of the move here is indeed validated. So, you know, Netflix is a fresh buy signal. It's going to have some trouble over here at the 110 uh, and 112 zones where we had that resistance before, but it still looks like it's got some legs to it. And so you're then looking at your intraday charts to fine-tune your entries. But that's the first time Netflix has broken out. Um, so why buy a delta of 60 instead of a delta of 80? Um, we do like to buy the higher deltas there, Don. So we're looking at more of those deltas of 80s, that kind of uh, bang for your buck for sure. AMD, a lot of you asking about chip stocks here. Look at that. AMD, not as good. Okay, why? Because AMD was in the bull trend. We had the CCI backing us up all the way until it kind of broke down with the percent R right here. The latest recovery rally, not retaking that. Some of you might talk about a head and shoulders top, right? You got the head, you got the two shoulders coming in here around it's just over seven bucks. Uh, so, you know, um, those would be a caution, but more importantly to me is that we're not getting the reconfirmation. This has not been a strong enough move up to take out that current 737 overhead resistance that it would need to take out to really get going again. So I would say stay away from AMD. I'm not saying short it, but I'm saying certainly um, it's a laggard compared to the other chip stocks. LRCX. Uh, so, yeah, again, LAM Research chips. The chips are are definitely in the news. Well, that one's breaking out huge. So you're right there, uh, Greg. That's a that's a hot mover there. We would like to catch the next little retracement. You see, right now it's about 98 and a third, but that line is going up. So you know we'd watch for the next little retest as a way to hop on board a name like that too. And again, they kind of all flew by me there. PTCT. It's another one that was asked about, and then I'll I'll kind of wrap it up here. So again, this one was dead money. PTC Therapeutics for a long time, right? You can see that it's just now starting to heat up. I tend to stay away from these kind of breakouts, even though it looks good in the short term there, Paul, um, because, um, you know, you've got all this overhead resistance. Now, sure, you could say, well, maybe it's going to at least fill this gap back here to $17 where it gapped down, and then that was a high there. Um, it could, um, but I've found that a lot of times there's so much technical damage with those kind of names that I, I've, I'm much more successful with buying the retracements after an upside breakout to new highs than trying to catch something that's coming off of such extreme new lows with all the past buyers through here, of which, you know, there's still some that are hanging on that are going to try to sell on to, into bounces. Okay, so again, and we talked about CRM there, Randy, and we were, we were definitely leaning bearish from the, uh, from the retest today. As I said, if it closes over $72, I would be saying uh, that's no longer valid. And so I, I, for now, I'm saying, yes, I'm more confident that we'll get another test down, that it's not over for CRM yet. And if I'm wrong, I get a quick stop out and I move on. If I'm right, I can probably catch it back down into the recent lows, or at least the closing lows there, which was about 68 and a half from the current 71 plus. Um, so good questions, a lot of good stuff here. Okay, now uh, Steve's favorite signal, B-E-A-T. Okay, last one, and then I'll r remind you of this. So biotelemetry, okay. So you can see this one had some really nice uh, breakouts here, but my requirement, you know, I, it, it went over, it almost got overbought yesterday, but it didn't at the close. Okay, if we'd finished over about 21 bucks here, you see 2081. Uh, if we closed above it yesterday, then it, that high of 2168 would have needed to be eclipsed and then to be off to the races again. But for now, I am not seeing the kind of confirmations that would tell me that we're there yet. So, uh, you know, I know Steve looks at a lot of interesting things too. So, you know, he's definitely one to listen to. I know he's been following it. It sounds like much more closely than I have. But bottom line is, in a nutshell, 
um, I, I need to see confirmation. If I don't get confirmation, I don't trade it. When we get confirmation like this, then yeah, we want to buy the retest, and then you get a wonderful entry at 14 and a half on the way up to 17. You know, and then you can start booking partial profits and trailing your stops or, you know, selling some other options against your long options or whatnot. There's a lot of things you'll learn how, that you can do in the position for profits course. I'm at my hour limit, so I don't want to keep Steve and his team longer than uh, they, they need to get on with their evening and get their rest too, as, as I do, get ready for the job support tomorrow and more opportunities with earnings season also heating up. You'll learn a lot about earnings season through this training as well and how we trade a lot of different options strategies. So what we said is you're getting the foundations for trading mastery. If you click on at the bottom, we actually kind of walk through on the tabs what's in each of the courses. So getting clear on your goals, building your plan, and then teaching about things like percent R. Every one of these has some technical analysis training woven into it. Acceleration bands and the DMI and ADX lines are in that foundations course. And then we also give you a lot of other great tools on how you can go back and track your uh, like uh, post-mortem analysis of what worked, what didn't, building your own success profile, how to build an effective system and actually really know how to test it and what to look for for success. The option strategies piece, of course, walks you through from the core Greeks and essentials of the options pricing model into um, you know buying calls and puts and then into debit spreads, credit spreads, calendars and diagonals, butterflies, iron butterflies, um, iron condors, of course, um, straddles and strangles, and even ratio spreads and pair trades. So there's a whole lot there along with the technical bonus training. And then the psychology gets into a lot of the, not just psychology, but also trade management, position sizing, risk management, um, how to protect yourself from potential psychological biases, new exit strategy research that I shared about what works the best on exits, and then uh, going on into um, how you can basically simulate trading and practice making perfect uh, within your execution side. I don't expect perfect meaning that you're going to win on every trade, but I expect your execution to be perfect eventually in following the signals in and out precisely and, and not second guessing yourself or the system. So all this stuff together, like I said, you can get all of these 39 sessions. Each one's an hour plus. You're, you're looking at 395 bucks. That's like 10 bucks a session. That's kind of insane value when I know people that have paid many, many thousands for my uh, real-time coaching. You're getting, okay, you're getting it through instant on-demand access. That way you can watch it at your own pace. And you can go back and watch it as many times as you want. We give you lifetime access as part of this package to all the courses that you buy here. As I said before, too, if you said, I just want to get one of these, if you just want the foundations piece or the ultimate option strategies or the trade psychology piece, all you got to do is just click on one of the links. So the foundation link would offer each of these 13-part uh, sessions for 195 here tonight. So if you just want to add one of them, that's cool. Um, that works out to about 15 bucks a session. That's still tremendous value. Um, and the one thing I would mention, though, is when you buy all three of them together for the 395 uh, already discounted off of the usual $1,500 total list price, I'm throwing in a, a month of my trading room. That's a weekly class that I do called Winter Circle where I go through an hour of all the different strategies that are out there. So you can see a lot of different online training of what option strategies make the most sense for what type of market. I'll be doing another one of those tomorrow morning after the jobs data at about 11 a.m. Eastern. Now, if you have any questions, you can always call us or 800 Big Trends number. If you can't remember that number up on the top right, it's just remember it's 800 Big Trends on your phone. Or you can email us through clientcare at bigtrends.com with any other questions you have. It's always a great honor to be in here with Steve Bigelow because I know he shares my passion for education. That's why I wanted to kind of really give you the maximum education package that I could um, put together and also at the best possible price we've ever offered it um, well below the $1,500 um, plus value that you're getting. You're getting it for just $395 here with the bonus Winter Circle Room. Or you can get each of the three components for $195 apiece when you click on those links above. And you, can, you, you should be able to walk through the um, cart yourself. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. But if you have any questions getting your order in, definitely feel free to call us or email us. We're here to help. Um, and Chris there is my lead consultant. So he's been helping share those links of how you can reach us anytime. I want to thank Chris for taking his time. And thank you all for your time. We're, we really are truly uh, big fans of Candlestick Trading Forum and look forward to Steve being in with our Big Trends community as well soon. Uh, and then, uh, Steve, I really appreciate everything and wish you and yours uh, great health and happiness always. And all of you, great health, wealth, and happiness, of course, 
as it relates to um, finding the next big trends in the markets. Thanks for being with us. Have a great evening, and I hope to see you again real soon. Back over to you, Steve. Thank you very much, Price. Everybody, the reason we like having Price back here as often as we do is because he's probably one of the best, oh, I want to say, conveyor of good quality information. And the other aspect is you will get way, way more than your money's worth when you uh, when you sign up for uh, Price's products. So, Price, thank you very much. Have a good evening, everybody. Have a good evening. We'll see you all in the chat rooms.